Come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. This is Unpopular Theology, episode 59. Today I'm going to be talking about six different types of Lutherans in America. Before we get started, go ahead and hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe, go over to our Facebook page, like us over there. We have a thing going right now where if we get 20, up to 20 likes on Facebook within the next month, I will post new content there every day. And, uh, yeah, with that being started, said, I'm not going to do personal announcements and uh, uh, video announcements because we got to get to this. It's a pretty long topic today. So, I do have to issue a disclaimer. These are broad categories. Not everybody that falls into these categories agrees on every little thing I'm going to say. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Some of these titles are mine, but a lot of them aren't. If they're not mine, I'll tell you. And do also realize that, yes, I am biased, and I recognize that. I am a Missouri Synod Lutheran, so I have my opinions about these various groups. So, let's jump in. Group 1 is the group that I will refer to as American Lutherans. And the prime example of this today is the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, or the ELCA. Characteristics they are they're theologically liberal. They will not, uh, they will, some of them will adhere to inerrancy, but most of them will not. Um, they will ordain women. They do endorse homosexuality. They are, they do open communion. Um, they're in fellowship with non-Lutherans. That is the defining factor of American Lutheranism. Is it tried to tries to Americanize Lutheranism. They are nominally confessional. They'll say they subscribe to the Augsburg Confession, but in practice, they really don't. And uh, this name comes from Samuel Schein Simon Schmucker who lived in the 17 or 1800s and was part of what was known as the General Synod. And he came up with this idea of American Lutheranism, where Lutherans would just become like other Protestants in America. He even wrote his own version of the Augsburg Confession. And so while he wasn't ELCA per se, the ELCA really carries on his tradition whether they know it or not. So group two is what I will refer to as moderate Lutherans. This, the primary examples are the Lutheran Congregations and Mission for Christ, LCMC, the North American Lutheran Church, NALC, the Association Free Lutheran Churches, AFLC, and most Lutheran denominations between the ELCA and LCMS. And uh, characteristics, they're moderates, so they aren't exactly liberal, but they're not exactly conservative either. Um, there are very varying degrees of confessionalism. It's very hard to pinpoint them. It really depends on the congregation, which brings me to the next point. Of outside of the ALC, they're I mean not the ALC, the NALC. They're mostly congregationalist. Um, they will hold to inerrancy and will reject homosexuality. However, in the case of the LCMC and NALC, they will ordain women. Uh, although that is not required by congregations to do so. They, as a general rule, practice open communion. And yeah, I'm calling them moderate Lutherans because the NALC and LCMC really see themselves as moderate Lutherans. That's They'll call themselves centerists, but moderate Lutheran is a pretty good title for them. So then this brings me to the third group on the list, the Lutheran Brethren. Um, the only example of this is the Church of the Lutheran Brethren in America, CLB or CLBA. Um, and they're socially conservative. I wouldn't really call them doctrinally conservative. Uh, another title that we can give them is Pietist. That's a really good title for them. They do subscribe to the three ecumenical creeds, so the, the Apostles' Nicene and Athanasian Creed. 
they subscribe to the unaltered Augsburg Confession. However, I would argue they may say that, but they really don't in certain areas. And they also subscribe to Luther's small catechism. They hold to inerrancy, reject homosexuality, and reject women's ordination. They do, however, uh, endorse open communion. They're also congregationalist, as is most of these other churches. And the big deciding factor with, big distinguishing factor is they are non-liturgical. And that's where I say that they stray from the Augsburg Confession, well, that and Open Communion, but they stray from the Augsburg Confession because the Augsburg Confession talks about retaining the Mass, and they do not practice the liturgy. Uh, they are also premillennialist, um, so this is a side tangent here. Most, so there are three different types of millennialism. There's amillennialism, which is what most Lutherans are. Which and Luther himself was an amillennialist, as was Saint Augustine. And this idea is that uh, Christ, Christ reigns now. A thousand years that Christ reigns is now. It's symbolic, and when He returns, it will end and will take us to heaven. There's premillennialism, and they would say they're historical premillennialist, so they don't believe in the rapture, um, where. They believe that Christ will have a physical kingdom on earth um, after the time of tribulation. And then there is um, post-millennialism, which is the most ironic of the whole thing, and I won't even get into it. No, no real Lutheran holds to that. But yeah, they're pre-millennialism list, and I have seen the documents on their website that say that. Um, apparently they reject confession and absolution from pastor, and I really don't, didn't see anything on their website explaining that, so that would be a topic for an unpopular visit. And then, yeah, they call themselves Lutheran Brethren, the original name was actually the Anti-Missourian League, and Pietist, I think, Pietism, I believe, came from a derogatory term towards that group, and they just embraced it. Uh, yeah, so now we move to group four, my group, and this is LCMS Confessional Lutherans. So the type of people that fall into this group are the Missouri Synod, the, so the LCMS, the Association of American Lutheran Churches, I think that's what the two A's are, I might have that mixed up, the AALC, which is an altar and pulpit fellowship in the Missouri with the Missouri Synod, and a few older members of the Wisconsin Synod may hold different views from the Wisconsin Synod in different areas that the Missouri Synod holds. So the Missouri Synod is definitely a conservative denomination. Um, holds a quia subscription to the Book of Concord, meaning that the Missouri Synod teaches that the Book of Concord is a true exposition of scripture, um, or another, the best, the more literal translation is that they subscribe to the Book of Concord because it is a true exposition of scripture, holds to inerrancy, rejects homosexuality, does not, does not ordain women, uh, first group to do this practices closed communion, so that means if you are not in altar and pulpit fellowship with the Missouri Synod, you cannot commune in Missouri Synod Church. Um, and then it has a distinction between prayer and altar and pulpit fellowship, so a Missouri Synod Lutheran could, would say, yes, you can pray with Christians who are not Missouri Synod. Um, the they hold a narrow view of the ministry um put more simply the missouri synod believes that the office of the ministry is restricted to the pastoral office and there will be another episode on this in the future i actually wrote a paper on the missouri synod and the wisconsin synod and the office of the ministry um role of women in the church it's a varying thing in the missouri synod um, 
I think it's most Missouri Synod congregations allow women to vote. Um, yeah, there's women's suffrage in the Missouri Synod. Group 5 is Wisconsin Synod Confessional Lutherans, or Wells. Uh, the examples are the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, Wells, the Evangelical Lutheran Synod, ELS, and on some characteristics, some members of the Missouri Synod. So the Wisconsin Synod is going to agree with the Missouri Synod when it comes to inerrancy, we have subscription to the Book of Concord, rejecting women's ordination and homosexuality, and closed communion. But the Wisconsin Synod does not see a distinction between prayer and altar and pulpit fellowship. They would say that in order to be in prayer fellowship, you need to hold the same views correct, as a Christian. Now, they will also say that if, for example, your grandmother just happens to be a member of a different church, and that's just because that was the nearest Lutheran church, and she doesn't has not espoused certain beliefs, they would say, yeah, it's okay to pray with her, but if, but if your cousin happens to be, I don't know, uh, CLB, and he uh, has espoused premillennialism to you, then you can't pray with him. That would be, that's where they draw the line. Um, they have what is called a functional view of ministry, or a wide view. What they believe is that yes Christ gave the ministry to the church but the church has the authority to to create different what they would call forms in the ministry so in the Wisconsin Synod they actually list all their church workers as ministers under three categories pastors oh three technically four categories um, pastors male teachers female teachers and staff ministers that is their little, that's their way of doing ministry, of seeing the ministry. Like I said, it's a functional view. It's an it's something that I will cover at a later date. The role of women in the church. Um, yeah, they don't have women's suffrage. They have a more, I guess, traditional view of women in the church. And so it is, you know, that's their view. And... From what I've heard, they basically have to have that view with the, their view of ministry because they see female teachers as ministers, so in order to keep them from preaching, they have to have that view of the ministry. Now we get to group six. This is probably the smallest group of the whole lot, and these are sectarian Lutherans. Uh, the examples are the Church of the Lutheran Confessions and the Lutheran Churches of the Reformation. So they are what I would call ultra-conservative, and they are the same as LCMS and Wells for various, for queer subscription, inerrancy, yada, yada, yada. Um, and they tend to hold the Missouri Synod's view of the ministry, although that's not always the case. Um, but they hold the Wells' view of altar and pulpit fellowship and women's suffrage. Uh, they t they are very congregationalist to the point where they actually say that the church only exists at the congregational level, and that's where the Missouri Synod and Wisconsin Synod disagree with them. Uh, they are they use the King James Version in their churches, but they're not KJV only per se. Um, they do. They just use it because they think it's the best English translation. It's a good translation of its. Uh, it's a good translation of its text, but it's not the best English translation overall. That's all I'm gonna say. And they will only use the Lutheran Hymnal of 1941 for various reasons. And they are not in fellowship with the Missouri Synod and Wisconsin Synod because they are too. Both are too liberal. So yeah, that is six different types of Lutheranism in America in under 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Next week, I'm going to pick up where I left off a few months ago with church history. So until then, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus.